In this video, we're going to begin building an inventory system by creating our inventory system UI, as well as creating an item template so we can easily add items later on. Let's begin! Shall we play a game? As I stated in the previous video, this build is not where I would attempt to cut my teeth if I had little to no experience with Bolt Visual Scripting. This is an intermediate build and there is no shame in taking one's time before jumping into something this complex. This system has a lot of features and the more features we add, the more complicated things get. Also for this build, you're going to need to go ahead and set up Bolt to run in Unity and there's a link in the description below that will help you do just that. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to the video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoy these tutorials and you'd like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. And as I stated in a previous video, if you just want the system but don't really want to build it yourself, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable. Not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller is as well. By the time we finish today's build, this is what we're actually going to have. An inventory canvas, an inventory, an item slot, an item, and an amount on top of those items. So uh, this is actually going to be duplicated, which I have, I think, 54, is that right? Yeah, so 54 different slots. Um, and just to show you exactly how I built this, I'm going to just delete this all together, and we're going to start over. So right-click on the hierarchy here, go to UI and create a canvas. And then we're going to rename this Inventory Canvas. And then over here on the right side where it says Canvas Scaler, we're going to select constant pixel size and we're going to scale this with screen size. And I'm going to set mine to 16.9, which is 1920 by 1080. Next, we're going to right click on our Inventory Canvas and we're going to scroll down to UI and then we're going to create a panel. And then we're going to right click that panel. We're going to uh, select UI and we're going to create another panel. So these are two items. Uh, this first one is going to be renamed inventory. And the second one is going to be uh, named item slot. Right click the item slot, go down to UI and we're going to create a, an image that sits underneath that one. And this one we're going to rename item. And then we're going to right click that and uh, we're going to go to UI and then we're going to uh, hit Text Mesh Pro. Now, I've already done this, but whenever you select Text Mesh Pro, you're probably going to get an import setting. Just go ahead and import everything and just move those files. It should be sitting in the asset folder here. Just move them inside your add ons folder, which is where I placed mine right here. Um, for the text, you're going to rename that amount. And I'll show you this next part. You're also going to need a few sprite files, which you can actually get by going to that online tutorial blog. If you scroll down right up underneath creating the inventory panel where I'm explaining this step by step, you can download the inventory panel, uh, a sprite that I have, as well as the empty slot. This is where those sprite files are going to come in very handy. So clicking on our inventory game object, uh, I'm going to navigate to my sprites folder here and uh, I'm going to look for my inventory right here. So Clicking on inventory, uh, uh, where it says background, I'm just going to drag in inventory and set it right here. I'm also going to turn the alpha on the color all the way to 255, so it's not transparent at all. Um, for the item slot, I am actually going to drag in empty slot in the background here and I'm also going to turn the alpha up to 255 on that one as well. For each of these items starting with inventory and going all the way down we're going to need to have the rect transform uh, this anchor preset here set to center. So what I'm going to do is just go into each one of these game objects and just set them all to centered. The next thing you're going to need to do is um, resize each of these images. So I'm going to start with item slot so it's a little easier to see. Our item slot is only going to be 110 by 110. Um, the inventory um, is going to be a different size. This is going to be an 1120 by 750. And that's the size that I've found helps, uh, helps me uh, see things. But again, the item needs to be 110, whoops, 110 by 110 and uh, we will adjust the, uh, si the amount of text. Um, we're going to set the X position on this to 23, the Y to negative 33, 
the Z is set to zero, the width is going to be 50, and the height is going to be 50. Uh, this is going to be just a number, and right now you can't really see it, but if you select the image, you kind of get a better idea as to where that's setting, and you're just gonna, you're gonna make sure that you uh, are happy with the positioning of that. Uh, we, I would leave it where I had it at 23, and then uh, as we kind of scroll down to this text, um, we're going to uh, align it to the right right here and you can center it or you can put it in the bottom right um, I find that that right there uh, looks actually pretty good okay I'm just going to uh, disable these two game objects for now the item and the amount we're just gonna work with the slot in the inventory one more thing I would recommend on this is going to the inventory game object the, the sprite image I'm going to sprite editor and I actually already have these set uh, you're gonna want to set the borders here 30 by 30 by 30 by 30 so the left the top the right and the bottom it's going to bring those borders in and um, I'll show you why in just a second um, we're also going to do the very same thing with our empty slot which I believe these are all set to 10 uh, it's just going to bring the outside borders in as to what scales is actually this middle part not the outside so that when we go back to our game objects here and we tell it we don't want it to be a simple game object we want it to be sliced it actually makes the corners more crisp and it stays the same no matter how big it is it's always the same so that's that's kind of the way that you want it on those borders so both of these need to be set to sliced in the image type the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to snap these item slots to a grid and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to our inventory game object and scroll down to the bottom hit add component and then we're going to type in grid layout group and then add that component to your inventory um, we're actually actually going to have to set a little bit of the settings here so uh, yours should look like this just click this little padding uh, drop down and we're going to set the left to 25 and the top to 25 and we will adjust that again here in just a second um, for the cell size we're going to set the cell size to 110 by 110 the spacing on the X and the Y the X is going to be set to 10 and the Y is going to be set to 5 uh, you'll notice there that the padding around this has kind of shifted down and to the right just a little bit. Now if you kind of want to visualize what your inventory system will look like whenever you duplicate the rest of these items, um, you can go ahead and fill up your screen and you can get a better idea as to what your inventory system is going to look like. And then you can kind of go back to that inventory item and uh, like move your spacing. Uh, up or down I'm gonna take the top and I'm just kind of kind of move it down a little bit and leave it set at 34 that looks pretty good to me once you get that done you're not going to actually need these items yet you're just trying to get an idea on where it's going to set on your inventory and uh, just just delete all of the item slots except for the original before we actually need to duplicate the item slots, we're going to need to set the necessary tags on each game item, and we're also going to need to go ahead and give some variables and some components to each one. The reason we're doing this now is so that we don't have to delete this later on. If we, however, run into something that we need to add to every single slot, then we'll just add it to the first one, delete the rest, and then reduplicate. Uh, but we're going to have to start with some tags, so just click on your inventory game object here. And um, I've actually already added the three tags that we're going to need, but if you don't have these, just go to add tag. Add one called item slot, one called item, and one called item amount. You add it by clicking that little button right there and typing in the name and hitting save. Okay, the first thing we're actually going to work with here is the inventory canvas. We're going to go ahead and add a component to it. This is going to give us, in the next tutorial, the ability to open and close this game object. So just add a component, add a state machine, and let's set it to embed. You can go ahead and delete this start function. The inventory game object will be the first game object that interacts with the item game objects in the world. It will do a series of checks to see if it can place it in the inventory. If it can, it will. If it can't, it won't. Um, and we're going to go ahead and set up the functionality, at least the foundation for these uh, future macros now. So what we're going to need is we're going to need a flow machine on this game object. So clicking on that and going down in the bottom inspector, hit add component, add a flow machine to that. Um, we're going to create a new flow macro. Uh, place it under our macros folder and let's just call this one inventory and we're going to need uh, three new variables for this uh, we're going to need one uh, that is called item added uh, this is going to be a boolean leave it checked off uh, we're going to need one called full 
Um, and that one is going to be a Boolean as well. Um, and then we're going to need one called Inventory Open or INV Open. And that is going to be a Boolean and leave that set, uh, the value set to false as well. The item slot will be checked uh, by the inventory system to see if it is full and if it is, if the item is the same, if it is, if it's capped, if it is, it's not going to send it to that slot. So there's a lot of checks that this one does. So it also is going to need a flow machine and we're going to give uh, a new flow macro to that one as well. Go to inventory system, go to macros and let's call this one item slot. Um, we are going to give this a uh, couple of uh, variables. Uh, both of these are going to be uh, boolean. So is full is uh, one. We'll set that to a boolean, and then the last one. Let's just call capped. Set that as a boolean as well, and the value is going to be checked off. Make sure that you go to this game object and give it one of those uh, tags that we made called item slot. Go ahead and tag that one item slot. The item game object is probably going to be the most complicated macro in this entire build, so it has to have a lot of functionality. I'm going to go ahead and check this one on and go ahead and give it the tag of item. Uh, we're going to give this one a flow machine as well, and um, there has to be a differentiation between items and inventory items, so I'm going to give this a new flow machine macro. Uh, I'm going to put this under my macros folder, and I'm going to call this inventory item. And that's the macro on this one. Uh, the variables that this one is going to need is going to need um, actually two. Um, and the first one is going to be called slot list. And this one is going to be an AOT list. AOT stands for ahead of time. Um, and the second one is called splitting item. Um, when we uh, implement the splitting functionality, we're gonna need that. Um, and I believe we already set the tag for that one, so that one should be good to go. The amount game object is pretty much set up. Um, we're going to need to go ahead and add the item amount tag to that one. Um, and um, we're also going to change the font. And in order to do this, um, I've actually included a link uh, on that uh, online blog to this font. And it's called Pieces of Eight. So you can go ahead and download that. Um, I have actually already taken care of this step, I believe. So going to my fonts folder, you see pieces of eight SDF uh, right there. Um, you might, when you in import this, you're only gonna have this one. So how do we get to uh, be able to use that? Well, the way we're gonna do that is go up to our window, go to text mesh pro and go to font asset creator. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag in our font that we want it to create. And then we're gonna tell it to generate a font atlas and um, this will come up and then we're going to hit save and then we're going to call it pieces of eight so just go ahead and click save then going back to our uh, amount game object i am going to select uh, pieces of eight right there and so you should see that, that updates on my screen and uh, i'm actually going to set that to two because one is never going to be an option there if yours is hard to see it's probably because you have this item image on it's you just kind of check that off for now and we'll come back to that in just a minute okay once you get all those things set up you should be able to now click on your item slot and go ahead and duplicate it whoops i actually messed up there i need to turn off that image so um, instead of turning everything off, I'm just gonna click the text Mesh Pro thing right here just to make sure that we have an empty slot. So if you ever get into trouble, you can always delete the remaining item slots and just start back over with the first one. Any changes we make are actually going to be to one, but um, that should be all the changes that we need from now on. Um, and so if you're happy with the spacing and the way that everything looks, we'll move on to the next game object. As you probably figured out by now, you can have as many slots as you want, and you can also, with the system, have as many game objects, uh, items, as you want. So, as soon as we get this item template set up, we can create as many items as we want using this template. The way we're going to do that is we're going to right-click, and we're going to create an empty game object, and let's just call this item template. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go over to our transform here. We're going to right click and hit reset and it's going to set the X, Y, and Z to zero, which means it's going to be setting it right here in the scene. And even if you gave this game thing a game image, for now we're not going to actually do that. You're still not going to be able to see it because it's going to be sitting behind your UI panel. So a way that we can just kind of take that out and just click on our game object, you're not going to be able to see it either way, but we're going to need to go ahead and add a flow machine to this. 
And there are going to be several variables for this, but the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a new um, macro. Let's call it uh, let's call it item. So just call it item and that's going to sit right in there anyway so going over to our variables we're going to add um, several string variables and the purpose of this is to have information that our tooltip can pull in later on so we're just going to go ahead and set these up now and then we'll make use of them later on so let's make one called item id and we're going to call this a string and let's just set that as a and item name this is going to be a string set that as b uh, and then we're going to need description and this is going to be a string and just put in C there again We're going to change these later on for each item. Let's put a cost uh, in there and this is going to be uh, An integer use a whole number here. Just set that to zero and um, Then we're going to do one called item cap and let's set that as an integer as well and set that to zero um, and then we're going to need um, a at least at least one, maybe more, depending on which item you need or what you'd like. So we're going to just define whether an item is consumable later on. You would do the same thing for equipable. You know, I don't have the I don't have the the game object, the player UI, to where you can actually put these things on yet. Um, I'm just building the system first, but we're gonna have to define whether it's something is consumable, for example, meat or a potion of some kind. And if it is, we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a con, uh, a con message, so a consume message. And uh, this is going to be a string. And just to be fun, we're gonna call this one mm, dot dot. Done. Last thing that we're going to do here is we're going to go to our inventory system under our prefab folder and we're just going to drag that item template down. As you can see, I have already done that, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and delete this one and we'll just do it again. And once we get that prefab in our folder, this is what we're actually going to unpack and use uh, for every item that we create later on. Once you have that done, you can now delete that from your hierarchy. Whoops, there's one thing I forgot. The item image is actually going to have to have an, uh, a sprite renderer on it as well because it's going to have an image. So just go ahead and uh, just leave it to none. And if you click on the uh, prefab right down here, you don't have to change anything later on. So, But if you did it in your scene, you're going to have to go up there and hit override and apply all. Okay, you should now have an inventory canvas set up with item slots, items, and amounts. Um, in the next tutorial, uh, we're actually going to start using our item template and we're going to uh, easily open and close our inventory using Bolt Visual Scripting as well as creating an inventory dictionary. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, got a long way to go, but I'm pretty excited. My name is Megahertz. Thanks for joining me. I'm out.